Welcome back. Now in the last video, we looked at the importance of using active listening techniques to get people to feel that we understand them, as well as the importance of reading between the lines and using empathy to anticipate how people are likely to feel and respond to things in order to make us a more effective communicator. Now this is significant because these abilities are crucially important in developing the foundations of emotional intelligence, which is far more powerfully linked to career success than what intellectual intelligence is. In other words, no matter how wonderful you may be at answering exam questions, it's your ability to understand and effectively communicate with people, which ultimately determines how well you do at life, more than anything else. Now in terms of efficient communication when you're explaining something to someone, the most important strategy is to anticipate what are the likely things that this person needs to know. What are, the, what are going to be the questions that they are likely to ask me after I finished explaining this? And to fill in those blanks whilst giving the initial explanation before that person then has to come back and ask additional questions to clarify. So to clarify, let me give you the classic examples that we have to deal with here in the office every single day that happen simply when the person trying to explain something to us forgets to think about what are the likely things we're going to need to know from them. And the most common times where this happens is when having to leave messages, emails or text messages for someone, especially when it comes to booking in a new lesson and changing days and times of availability. So let's say hypothetically you forgot to update your availability in Teachworks as happens to just about everybody occasionally and we've gone ahead and booked in a lesson for you called you up, left a message saying, hey, look, we've got a new student for you. Here's the day, here's the time, can you please confirm? You've received this message, realized, oh, damn it, I forgot to update my availability. So now you've got to get back to us and reply by leaving a message, a text message, or an email. So let's look at a typical kind of email that you might receive. Sam, you've got a new student booked in for 4 p.m. on Monday. Details are below, please confirm. Now let's look at how not to reply. Hi Stuart, look, I'm really sorry, but I can't make uh, Monday at 4 p.m. I've been really busy with uni assignments. I've got assignments due next Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. I've got prac placement that'll be on until the 24th. Also, my dad's been in hospital with gastroenteritis for the last three days. My dog's had the flu since Friday. Oh, my girlfriend's been kidnapped by a Nigerian scammer, so I've been flying around the world trying to locate her, and I haven't had any internet reception. And by the way, that's probably only a slightly more comical version of some of the actual responses we've received. The point is this, though. When Sam wrote this email, he didn't really stop and take into consideration what's going through the mind of the person reading it. He didn't stop to consider that the person reading this email, the person managing the business here at top of the class, has to read over 100 emails a day. They have to write over 150 emails a day. They have to receive over 100 phone calls a day and respond to over 50 voicemail messages a day. They don't have the time to read this long explanation about why Sam forgot to log into TeachWorks, and even if they did, the priority on their mind right now is not the reason why he forgot. So let's try a little exercise right now. Imagine that you're the person on the receiving end of that email from Sam. What's going through your mind right now? What is it that you're trying to figure out? What is the goal that you're trying to achieve? What's the question that needs to be answered? What is the thing that Sam should have told us rather than give us this explanation about something that isn't particularly important? We don't have to be psychic, and in case you haven't already guessed it, the question is, okay, Sam, but if you can't make it at 4 o'clock on Monday, is there another time you can make it? So now that Sam has gained a slightly better ability to anticipate the next question, instead his response might be, Sorry, my bad. I forgot to update my availability. Apologies for the inconvenience. I'm happy to take on this new student, but I just can't make Mondays. Can they do any other time? Well, this is certainly more efficient than the initial response, but at this point I still need to get back to Sam again to fill in some of the blanks. So trying to anticipate what it would be like in this situation, what do you think those blanks that need to be filled are? Well, an even less ambiguous response could have said, Sorry, I forgot to update my availability. Apologies for the inconvenience. Sorry, I can't make Mondays, but I'm happy to take on this new student if they can make Tuesdays, Wednesdays, or maybe Fridays. Now, remember, statistically, by this stage, there's a 50-50 chance they might be pretty frustrated that we told them Sam was available at Monday at 4, and now it turns out he's not. But, assuming that they're still happy to go ahead, if I've given this information, they still need to get back to me to clarify further. So, are you able to anticipate what are the blanks still to be filled in? Their response is likely to be, well, what time on Tuesdays and Wednesdays? We'd actually prefer Fridays, so can he do Fridays or not? So by the time I got Sam's response, I then got back to the clients, left a message with them. They got my message, got back to me to clarify. I've got to go back to Sam to clarify further. 
wait for him to get his response and then go back to the client, back and forth, back and forth. So when trying to anticipate what things are like behind the scenes, if you didn't know any better, you might be forgiven for assuming that the communication process perhaps looks a little something like this. Sure, let me just ask Sam what his available times are. Sam, what are your available times? He said, what times would you prefer? How about Monday, Sam? No, he said he can't do Monday. Okay, how about Tuesday, Sam? What time on Tuesday? How about four o'clock? No, he says he can't do four, how about five? No, he can't do five, how about six? No, he said, how about Wednesday? Now, if that's how it really was, things would be a lot easier, but the reality is, it's nothing like that. What time on Wednesday? Hmm. How about four? How about five? How about six? How about Thursday? How about Friday? What time on Friday? How about Saturday? What time on Saturday? So what I'm really trying to hope that you can understand here is that people don't always answer the phone straight away. They don't always receive a message or an email straight away. And when they do, they don't always reply to it straight away. So all these back and forths and back and forths realistically can and often does take two, three, four, sometimes even five days or more until we reach a definitive answer. And so in that amount of time, the client has often either just changed their mind or they've just found someone somewhere else that got back to them sooner. And all those back and forth, back and forth became a complete waste of time for us here at the office. So now seeing things from our perspective, if everybody communicated with us like that so inefficiently, those numbers that I gave you before would start to double or triple. You know, 100 emails a day would now have to become two or 300 emails a day with all the back and forths. So now if Sam was able to anticipate what it is we're thinking, what are we likely to need from him without having to overtly tell him every single time, the response he's likely to word would look a lot more like this. Sorry, I forgot to update my availability. Apologies for the inconvenience. Look, I'm happy to take on this student if they can make either Tuesdays from 3 to 7 or Wednesdays from 4 to 6. Thank you, Sam, but there's still one thing that I need you to do. Can you anticipate what it is? And I've just updated my new availability in TeachWorks for you. So hopefully by now you realise why, A, we need to keep your availability updated at all times before we book in a new student for you, and B, why when communicating your days and times of availability, we need you to be as specific as possible to minimise those back and forths.